Hello and welcome to the seventh video on our series on labor market search fictions. In this video, we're going to look at the firms and wages inside the DMP model. So let's start with the firms. As we said in a previous video, if a firm wants to post a vacancy, it has to pay some cost. This vacancy posting cost is going to be valued at K. So all vacancies cost the same, they cost K. And when a vacancy gets filled, then the firm can produce Z units of consumption goods and also has to pay a wage W to the consumer. So the decision the firm has is whether or not to post the vacancy. We can look at this decision by looking at the value of posting the vacancy. Now, what this text is saying is the following. The value of posting a vacancy that we're going to denote by V is the cost if the vacancy has to be paid, so there is a negative here, that's the cost of posting the vacancy. And with some probability, PF, that's the probability the vacancy is filled, then the firm gets to produce, but also gets to pay wages. So it gets a profit of Z minus W in case that the vacancy is actually filled. Now, the decision of the firm is then very easy. The firm wants to keep posting vacancies as long as V is greater than zero. If V is less than zero, then the firm doesn't want to post vacancies. And if V is equal to zero, then the firm is, of course, indifferent between posting more vacancies or not. We're going to see that there is going to be a critical force for equilibrium in this equation because we haven't discussed this yet. And in this next video, we're going to see why this is true. But the probability of filling the vacancy depends itself on the total number of vacancies that are posted. And so we're going to see that if the value of a vacancy is positive, then more firms want to post vacancies. But as they do, the probability of filling an individual vacancy is going to go down. That fact that firms want to post more vacancies, but as they do, posting a vacancy and filling it is going to be harder, also means that V is going to get lower. And as firm gets lower, then it's going to be harder for them to want to keep posting vacancies. We're going to go back to this in the next video. But first, we want to finish this section by talking about how wages are going to be defined in equilibrium. So here, wages are going to be bargained between the consumer and the firm. The reason you have to bargain the wages in this case is because when you introduce search frictions, you actually have an individual worker meeting a firm that posted a vacancy. So they can actually here have an interaction and bargain over this value of the wage. We're going to see how this is going to be done. The objective of the bargaining is going to be to set a wage that's going to split the total surplus generated by the match between the firm and the worker in a way that gives each of them portion of the surplus that's going to be proportional to their bargaining power. So what is this surplus that's being generated? Well, the consumer receives some surplus from finding the job. Basically, the consumer is going to get the wage, but that's not the total value because the consumer, even without the job, had a certain income B. Even if the consumer doesn't find a job, if the consumer walks away from the job, they can still get their unemployment income B. Because of that, the surplus of the consumer is W minus B is only the extra income that the consumer gets for being employed. This is important. It's not the total income. It's just the extra income. Something similar happens to the firm. If the firm gets to hire the worker, the firm doesn't get all the revenue Z of what was produced. The firm only gets Z minus W, the profits, because the firm has to take out the part that is being paid to the worker. Now, the total surplus for the match is going to be Z minus B. Z minus B is the total amount of additional value that's generated in the economy when there is a match between a firm and a worker. So what about the bargaining? Well, we're going to introduce a new parameter that we're going to call A. And A is going to be the consumer's bargaining power. So you might think that the stronger the bargaining power is, the higher the wages are going to be for workers. And that's indeed the case. 
What we know here is that the consumer will get a fraction A of total surplus. So consumer surplus W minus B, it's equal to A times Z minus B, the total surplus. You can operate on this and find out that wages are going to be equal to an average of Z and B. And this is very interesting because Z is not only the productivity of the worker, it's also the highest wage the firm is willing to pay. Let's go back for a moment. If W is greater than Z, then actually hiring the worker is generating a loss for the firm. So the firm is never willing to hire a worker that's going to get them less than Z. Okay? So W here cannot be greater than Z. On the other hand, B is the lowest value of wages that the consumers are willing to take. This is like their reservation wage. The reason is that they can get B anyway by just walking away and getting their unemployment income. So this is very interesting because A is not only the bargaining power of the worker that's splitting the surplus, A is also the weight here for this average. If A is higher, then wages go up towards the maximum wage that can be obtained. If A is lower, then wages go down towards the minimum wage that can be paid. So the higher the bargaining power, indeed, the higher the wage. In our next video, we're going to start talking about how we close the model by defining the role of search and matching, which is going to be what's behind the values of the probabilities of finding a job and filling vacancy.